Dictionaries are a very useful and simple data structure. In today's video, I will be going over how dictionaries work, how we can implement them, and I will go, I'll cover some practical examples of where they can be used. So a dictionary starts off with a key. We can say a key can be any sort of value. For example, it could be a string, a number, a float. And we might have a value associated associated with such key. And this value could be something, again, like a float or a string or a number. And us wanting to create an association between the key and the value is the basic idea of a dictionary. So a key could be something like our age and a value associated with the key could be a number, for example, 20 or 30. Now, one important thing to remember is the key must be unique. This does not apply for the value, so we can have multiple values which are the same in a dictionary. However, every key has to be unique. Since every key should exist once in the dictionary and every value is associated with a key. Now, how would a key value pair be used? And this is why we have dictionaries to store a collection of key value pairs. So let's say I have a name. For example, my name is Ali and I want to add my surname. So I've got surname Awan and then I can have my hobbies, programming and this goes on and on. So as you can see, we can have a unique key and have values for each of those keys. And this way we can create a table of sorts, which is a dictionary to store associations between these different keys and values. I will now go into a practical example of how we can program a dictionary in C. Here I have a simple Hello World program and I'm going to start off by creating a struct to hold the values we need to create the dictionary. Now this dictionary will have keys, which are strings, and the values stored in the keys will also be strings. So as you can see here, I've created a array of strings for both the keys and the values. I'll have a final integer here, which is the maximum size, which represents the maximum number of keys and values we can have inside of the dictionary. So we want to have a way to initialize these variables. I'm going to create a function here called initialize or rather dict initialize. So we're going to pass in a dictionary. We're going to pass in a size. So the maximum number of keys and values. And finally, I'm going to pass in a parameter called max string size. This will just tell us the maximum size of each key or value that we can have in a dictionary. And this prevents, uh, this allows us to know how much data each key and value individually can hold. So we can dereference the dictionary variable and we can use the struct initialization syntax introduced in C11, which makes this very easy. So we're going to put in a type of dict here and then the keys will be dynamically allocated. To have access to malloc, you have to import the standard lib.h header file. So we can say size of child pointer times by size. And I'll repeat that for the values. The size, of course, will be the size given. And that's about it for the dictionary itself. Now, the max string size. How are we going to specify the size of each string? Well, that's pretty simple now. We can just go over each string, sorry, each key and value inside of the dictionary and just allocate some memory for it. So we iterate over the size for the variable called i and the keys at i be equal to malloc of max string size and the same will be for the values. Now we can just put max string size directly in here because the size of a char which is 
each character is going to be one. So there's no point in adding size of char because we're just multiplying by one. Max string size will not change. And once we've done that, we've finished initializing the dictionary. So I can create a dictionary here. And then I can do dict initialize. Pass in the memory address of the dictionary. Let's say I want 10 elements and the maximum size of 50. So this is something I design my APIs around, which you may have noticed. I have the user pass in the struct themselves. And this gives the user freedom. So whoever is using this API, for example, they might want to use a custom allocator to, to allocate the dictionary. Or they might want to store it on the they might they might want to allocate it on the stack. And by just letting the user create the dictionary and pass it in, rather than me doing something like this and then having to return the dictionary myself, this is a lot more convenient for the user as they have much more freedom over how they over where they put the dictionary. Now the next part is how do we add something to the dictionary? We're going to create a function here, which is going to run a boolean, which will tell us if we have successfully added this key value pair into a dictionary or not. So we're going to do dict add. We're going to pass in the memory address of the dictionary, the key, and the value. So if you remember back to the PowerPoint, I mentioned that every key in the dictionary must be unique. So the first thing that we want to do is check that this key does not already exist inside the dictionary, because if it does, then we just return false because we can't have duplicate keys. So I'll just iterate over the size, the variable called i, and I'll just check if the key at this point is equal to the key we're trying to add into the dictionary. If you do find a match, you can just return false. So I accidentally closed on my editor, but we're back here again. So here we've checked if the key exists already in the dictionary. And if it does, we just return false. Now we want to, now that we've confirmed that the, diction, the key value pair does not exist inside the dictionary, we can then check if we are able to add it. So we're going to first check if the dictionary is current index is going to be is going to be less than the maximum size. Now I seem to have missed a variable here called occupied. And this just tells us the current number of elements or rather the, the current number of key value pairs in the dictionary. And we don't have to worry about initializing it here because by default, if we didn't put it here, it's going to be initialized to zero, which is what we want. So we're going to check if the occupied variable is less than the maximum size of the dictionary. If it is, then we have space to put in this key value pair. So we are going to copy into the memory of the key, the key that you specified, and you do the same for the value. And after we've done this, we will just increment the occupied variable so that the next time we try to add something into the dictionary, we'll have space for it. So here, once we've done that, we can just return true. And to avoid having any compiler errors saying that not all control paths will give a return statement, we just return false at the end. And this can also be hit if the dictionary is full and we don't have any space for adding more values. So let's test this out. So if you try this right now, Okay, we've got some errors. So clearly we, we forgot to, this should be keys. And 
Born to Intrude over the Array again. I don't know. It shouldn't be either, sorry. It should instead be dipped occupied. So it compiles, we run it, and we didn't get any output. Okay. So what might have happened is, if I want address sanitizer, we might have had a memory issue. Yeah, we did. Okay, let's see what happened. Heat buffer overflow in tw line 29. Yeah, so this is another mistake I made. It should not be dick dot size, but rather dick dot occupied, which is the number, which is the current amount of key value pairs in the dictionary. Close this. We run this again. We get success. Great. If I try to then add this key value pair again with the same key, let's just add in some random text. We should get zero because we can't have duplicate keys in the dictionary. Now let's try to do something else. I'm going to set the maximum size of the dictionary to five. And here I've got six elements. And I will change the keys so that they are all unique. Then I'll just increment all of them. Now when I run this, I'm expecting the dictionary to return true up to the key 5, so up to this point here. Once we reach this point, the dictionary should be full. So when I run 6, it should be unsuccessful in adding the extra element, or rather the extra key value pair. So if I compile this and run, we get another memory problem. Heat buffer overflow in line 29. So we made another mistake. Let's see. Okay, so the box seems to have been, I forgot to write the comparison here. So if you run it again, it seems to have compiled. And if you run it, yeah. So as you can see, once it reaches the sixth element, we are unable to add any more elements to the dictionary. Now, how do we retrieve key value pairs, or rather just values from the dictionary? And this is where we can write another function called dict get value at key. We just pass it in the dictionary. And then we can just check if we are able to we just check if the key the user is going to specify is in the dictionary. Keys at I, we're just trying to see if it's there. And if we do find it, we can just return the key. Sorry, rather the value at this index. Otherwise, we just return null, which means that this value doesn't exist inside of the dictionary. So let's say value dict get value at key part of the dictionary. Our key is one, so it should be there. If I run this now, we get world. If I pass in some random key, we get null because it does not exist. The final thing we want to do is remove elements or key value pairs from the dictionary. So how do we do that? We can say dict remove key value pair. We just pass in our dictionary again. Pass in our key. We can then copy and paste this for loop right here. Check if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, we can switch to this right here. Okay. What we want to do now is remove this element or this key value pair from both the keys array and the values array. How do we do that? 
Well, what we can do is just copy all the elements after this index in both the keys and values array and we can just copy them backwards. So what I mean by that is, let's say we have an array of five elements and I want to remove three. I can just take the memory from here and then just put it there. So I overwrite the memory holding the value of three. And we can do this through a variable called mem move. You might have also seen mem copy, but since we are going to be copying overlapping regions of memory, mem copy can sometimes fail with that. But mem move has been guaranteed, has been guaranteed rather to from the standard that it will handle overlapping regions. So we first have to pass a destination, which is going to be our current area. So let's say dict at keys plus i. And we want to part we want to copy in where do we want to start copying from? So we're going to start copying from the next element of dict keys. Finally, how many elements do you want to copy? That'll be equal to the current number of occupied key value pairs minus i, which is the current index. And we can do the same thing for the values. Right, then we just return true. So let's see if this works. I'm just going to remove the couple of elements here. So let's say we've got four. We try first try retrieving it, and then successfully removed four. Dict remove key value pair dict, and then we just pass in four, and try retrieving it again. So if we try running this. So we successfully removed 4, and when we try to retrieve it again, we got a value of null. Let's try removing 4 again in the dictionary. Since it's not in the dictionary, what should happen is we just get a value of false. So 0 right here, which means that we could not add, or rather we cannot remove this key value pair because 4 does not exist as a key inside of the key array, so we can't remove it. Thank you for watching this video, that's it. In the next video, I'll be showing you guys how we can create a generic dictionary. And what I mean by that is, the values string, we, right now we have values being strings. We might want to have dictionaries where we have strings as the keys, but we might want to have a float or an integer or a double or a string as a value. And you might want to store that all in the same dictionary. So how can we do that? Right now, what we'd have to do is just quick, quick copies of the dictionary. So you have to do something like int right here for so integer one for integers. And then we have one for doubles. We have to do one for doubles again. Be a double pointer. So we have to repeat the same code and we have to write these functions all again and it's quite messy. So we can use the generic operator to kind of simplify this along with some of the other code I've shown in the a video called the cool, a cool trick with variadic functions. I'll, show, I'll also put that up somewhere on the screen. And yeah, stay tuned for that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And the source code for this tutorial will be in the description as well. Thank you for watching.